Have you noticed how many discussions about music end in pointless war of religions? Hello, Top Patters. This is Simon Mas, a guy with a master's degree in music and zero patience for crusades. What is causing this war between those who think new music is utter crap, mostly folks my age or older, and those that think it's completely irrelevant in today's world, mostly younger folks? This is not a generation war, it is much worse. It's almost like an evil monster is turning us into mindless idiots. What if I told you that it is almost like that? The only difference is there are three evil monsters. Three biases turning music lovers into soldiers and stopping people, perhaps even you, from approaching any unfamiliar music with an open mind. Perhaps it's time to look inside ourselves and fight these biases. Time to meditate, to keep our chill, to look at these monsters in the face and conquer them once and for all. The first bias is lumping any new music together, as if all new music shared a set of characteristics that made all of these songs sound exactly the same. The same happens with old music, by the way. Why is this wrong? Let's start considering the music in the charts. Do you think Dua Lipa sounds like Weekend, Steve Lacey, BTS, Taylor Swift, Bad Bunny or Arctic Monkeys? Or that any two of these acts share so many features that we can pigeonhole them in the same artistic box? It's a bit like saying that Paul Simon sounds like Public Enemy, Whitney Houston, Depeche Mode, Iggy Pop and Cine the Connor. They all put out an album in 1990, the same year as Simon's Rhythm of the Saints, the last album of his that I liked. On top of that, I hate to break the news, but it's 2023. Mm. The charts are not the only place where you can find new music. There are lots of independent distributors, for example. Of the last nine albums I bought, six were by independent artists on Bandcamp. Very different albums and artists. I doubt these albums will ever end up on any magazine chart, though. Do they not count? Well, Bandcamp sells millions of tracks and albums every year to people like me. And Rick Beato, a YouTuber with almost 4 million followers, claims that any new act can make it through social media. But then, Beato routinely puts out videos moaning about how new music is bad, looking only at the charts or at Spotify's most streamed as a source. Hey Rick, what's the deal? Either we, the consumers, are the new gatekeepers and labels and traditional media are irrelevant, or labels and their outlets are relevant enough for you to think that's the place to find new music. You can't have it both ways. Second bias, confusing personal tastes with universal truths. We can all say that the music we personally like has I don't know, a lot of guitars in it, or strong melodies, or crazy chord changes, or a beautiful production. Whatever. But when we talk with someone, especially someone we don't know, we shouldn't assume they share our tastes. Why not? Because it creates a bad vibe in the discussion, because it keeps people with even slightly different tastes from participating to stay away from flame wars and because we are missing out. I've spent years thinking that all electronic dance music was bad and then I discovered the Prodigy and I found out they rocked harder than some other proper rock bands. Had I not been so narrow-minded, I could have found that exception earlier and discovered that many more EDM acts are well worth listening to. Going back to the new music versus old music debate, 
I find that most video claiming that all new music is crap or old music is irrelevant suffer from this bias. What these people are really saying is that all music should sound like the music they like. They are smart enough to dress their argument well, but in the end, it all boils down to it's incredible that music unlike the music I like is even allowed to exist. Do you want to sound that sad? I thought you wouldn't. Sad or not, you feel it's time to come down hard on these autotune people or those that make inauthentic robotic music. Then stop right now and go back to meditating. Otherwise, if you're cool and you bettered your karma putting a like to this video, we can start talking about the third bias, a profound and irrational fear of technology. For some people, mostly older folks I have to say, anything sounding too artificial is inherently bad, almost a threat to the idea of humanity itself. And newer genres from hip-hop to electronica sit right at the center of this artificiality. There's people hating that artists who can sing still use autotune, for example, because it's not natural, as if guitar distortion or dividing an octave in 12 exactly equal parts were natural. Other people can't stand digital tricks like putting tracks into a grid so that everything is exactly in time. It makes the music artificial and less human. But what if this was actually the point? What if these productions and artists were playing with artificiality? After all, we are destroying an entire planet thanks to pollution, plastic, deforestation, and so on. Isn't it natural that some musicians reflect the artificiality of our own world into the music they produce? Besides, people hating technology is not a new thing at all, even in music. Early 1970s, some critics accused Pink Floyd of abusing technology. Their music required no effort. The gear did all the work. Was it true? The following quotes are from Pink Floyd live in Pompeii. Please, don't sue me. It's this question of using the tools that are available when they're available. I mean, it's all extensions of what's coming out of our heads. I mean, you've got to remember that it's, you've got to have it inside your head to be able to get it out at all anyway. I and mean, the, the equipment isn't actually thinking of what to do any of the time. It's like saying, give a man a Les Paul guitar and he becomes Eric Clapton. And of course, the emergence of decent AI-generated music has thrown fuel on that fire. But hear me out. AI is just another tool to produce music. If it can be used to create great music that moves even just to one of us, well, why not? Having cleared our minds from misconceptions, let us go back to the core essence of the matter. What is music? Music is a tool. It is something that we use to create a community, to make it tighter through common aesthetics, something that gives us excitement and fun. If you think of music like that, there are no rules. And if you think of music like that, if you don't like what's pumping from the speaker, just move on. It's the music of another community. It's not aimed at you. Discussing music and its rules can be a lot of fun. Let's try and do it with a sense of building a community. Or let's try and understand what other people find in that solo we hate or in that dodgy beat or whatever. Let's open our minds and our hearts. Because music is a journey. If you always take the same route, you are missing out for sure. And with this fortune cookie message, it's time to close this video. Tell me what you think with a comment. See you soon for more music related content. In the meantime, stay cool and keep your top hat on. Bye! Simon Mas, music you love.